started because of a sort of a strange inventory issue. Uh, we purchased an additional acreage that was contiguous to our farm up there and it was a hay farm. So we had to hay off all the bad stuff that was in that back field. And then the next year when we hayed again, uh, we still had all that stuff from the back field from the previous year. So when you're in the hay business, you got one or two choices. You either pull it all out of the barn and burn it, or you find something to eat it. And so a friend of mine said, you know, you really should think about Highland cattle because she called them stupid proof. You can be pretty stupid and still do pretty well with Highlands. And they eat pretty much everything because they eat um, both grays and browse, which was a funny thing when the first American grassland inspector came out. And so they graze and browse. So they did real well on that, that old hay. And we thought, oh, good idea. We'll buy two steers, one for us to eat and one to sell. Well, a long story short, within about a year and a half, we had 10 Highland. And so then that sort of got us into the beef business. And uh, so that's what got us started. And then my husband's health deteriorated in Washington. So six years ago, we picked up the whole operation and moved it down here to Arizona. So that was a whole different world to get into uh, when we moved to Arizona. Everything that we knew about cattle and beef and all that was different down here. So we had to relearn everything. It took us a couple of years to figure that out. Uh, so that's that's our history. So we moved the name with us from Washington, and uh, but we're now based here in the Pinal Mountains uh, in uh, southeastern Arizona. We are we are actually the largest. Um, we are actually the only, uh, which makes us the largest commercial Highland breeder in Arizona. We're it. People come out just to see the cattle because they're so unique. It tastes a lot like buffalo or bison, but the advantage that you have is highlands are still considered domestic because if you have buffalo or bison, you got to have like eight or 10 foot fences, but the highlands are very calm, very sweet, and they both graze and browse. So they have fit real well into Arizona because where we're at, uh, the land is sort of useless for pretty much anything else. So, but the highlands are doing real well here. Yeah, the meat is uh, the meat is very distinctive. It's very very dark in color, and it tastes like like I said, like bison or buffalo. What is the difference between your grass fed, grass finished Highland cattle, and someone going to the store and buying the, their typical store bought beef? Huh. I always tell people, I said, on a scale of one to ten, McDonald's beef is a one, uh, regular grass fed beef is an eight, and Highland beef is a ten. Uh, so the big difference that we talk to them about is that Highland is a breed. They are higher in protein. They're about 13% higher in protein and uh, about 22% lower in fat and cholesterol than other grass-fed beef. So, you know, I always tell people when you go to the store, number one, you don't know where that beef came from. Even if it's labeled grass-fed, you don't know where it came from and you don't know if it was grass-finished. And so people are... are our customers are becoming much more aware of the difference between grass fed and grass finished. And with the pandemic, they've really realized where their meat's coming from or not coming from, you know, because they removed the country of origin labeling on meat and uh, chicken. So, you know, and seafood. So now when you go to the store, you have no idea where it came from. Yeah, some, uh, an animal that's just grass fed is an animal that at some time in its life, it walked on grass. It could be in a very short period of time. It could have been one month that it walked on grass. But what we position as grass fed and grass finished means that that animal has only eaten grass and forage for its entire lifespan, which is why it takes us almost three years to finish a highland. Uh, and as I tell people in the grocery store, those animals that you're eating from the grocery store are probably about eight or nine months old because what they do is they take them very young from the ranchers. And then they take them to a finishing feedlot where they're fed GMO corn and grains, and then they're given antibiotics to counter the effect of the fact that they're, you know, they're packed in there so close. And then also cattle are not genetically programmed to eat corn and grain. It upsets their stomach. So you have to be really careful when you feed them. And so what they do is if they get sick, you know, then they have to give them all the, the drugs and the antibiotics and all that because they'll founder. Uh, more than once we've been butchering cattle out here and, where somebody says, you got to come and kill the steer right now because uh, he's he's bloating. And, you know, I asked, always ask the butcher and say, grain finished, huh? And he says, yep, gave him too much grain too fast. So much higher risk of bloating the cow. But the good news is the finishes up 
the beef a lot faster and it puts more fat in the meat, uh, which of course is pounders that they get to charge for. So grass-fed meat and grass-finished is much leaner. It's much healthier for you. Uh, and there's none of the GMOs that are in it that are out there. You know, there's none of the drugs. There's none of the, you know, all that other stuff that's, that's in there in the commercial process. So that's why we really jumped on board with American Grass-Fed. Oh, 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 oh